Pete, uh, 1951, you arrived at Geelong, and uh, I noticed in the records, didn't play a game till game six, but in fact you went straight into the senior side. How did a young fellow from Eagle Hawk in Bendigo come to get to Geelong? Well, in the first place, um, I had no ambition at all, and it was a surprise to me. I was working at a place called Ashman's in Bendigo, and... Um, I believe that um, a chap by the name of Don Murray recommended uh, me to the Geelong Football Club. And the next thing I know that Jack Jennings and Laird Smith, who was secretary at the time, was uh, outside the uh, factory that I worked in in Bendigo asking the boss if they could interview me. And of course he said, yes, OK, that's all right. And um, I was taken out in a Ford Custom Line car and interviewed and um, I signed up there and then, and Jack Jennings uh, said that I was probably one of the easiest players he ever signed up. And then, of course, I had to go and get permission from my mother. She didn't even know, and of course I knew what the reception would be there. No, you're definitely not going out to play football for, for Geelong. But anyway, we overcame that little problem, and uh, well, from then on, that's the, that's the pick of that story. Hmm. And of course it's history, uh, Pete, that 51, 52 premierships... As Rovers, you and Nipper obviously had to have good ruckmen. Who were the better ruckmen we had in those days? Well, there was Tom Morrow and there were Bill McMaster, uh, Norm Sharp, uh, Jake Norman, Jim Norman. Um, they, were, they were really good ruckmen and um, sort of made it easy for Nipper and I, I'm sure. But um, Nipper and I, we had a pretty good understanding. Um, we usually shared the, the roving. Um, I think we used to work it out about every seven minutes. We'd have about seven minutes each on the ball. And uh, we used to, uh, as a matter of fact, you could see it then, but you can't see it now. The, uh, the clock at the South Geelong Hall over there. I'm not sure what the oh, place the is. Oh, the Albert Hall. Is it? Yes. Well, that's what it is. Well, uh, well, we'd keep our eye on that, particularly when we were playing at Geelong, and try and work it out that we had our seven minutes each rather than hog the ball all the time, which happens a lot, I think, in uh, ruck. Uh, ruck combinations and roving combinations. Yeah, it'd probably take him the next question. I was going to ask you how you formed such a remarkable combination. There were some great players around in those days, of course, the Flanagans and the Smiths and all of those sort of guys, mm. and it must have been reasonably easy, I suppose, to slot into a team like that. Well, it was, and I was lucky uh, particularly because um, when I first came here, I played in practice matches, but I got an injury and that, put, that uh, kept me out for five weeks. So I really got my first game in Adelaide. When we were playing Adelaide, we played the premise of the Adelaide competition five weeks after the, first, the season started. And then I think Bill McMaster and I, um, I know Bill got games early, but I'm pretty sure at that, on that game that Bill and I were p uh, picked in the side and that, uh, that meant that we had to give it everything and, and, and try and make the side. Well, we did. We both got in and, and the rest is history. Absolutely. Now, in, in the, the mid-60s, uh, I guess you'd concluded your playing career. You took on the coaching job and, uh, what, 66, 67, the meritorious grand final. And, and I mm. guess <laughs> we're all going to take to our grave whether that was or wasn't a goal. Yeah, well, um, actually, I went to Colac uh, coaching for three years and then Western Australia for three years. Came back and went back to Colac, and then um, I, I was uh, I put in for the job at Geelong in 1965, and and uh, was appointed in 1966. But uh, as far as that goal goal was concerned, to me it certainly looked as though it was in. And <laughs> there were a couple of other things about that game that Polly Farmer has been very outspoken about, <laughs> and I I have to admit I agree with Polly. Yeah, so yeah. disappointment, I guess, but I mean, uh, to play and to coach with uh, the Geelong Footy Club, a, a wonderful thrill. Well, it's never anything that entered into my thoughts as a young fellow, as a kid. I was quite happy to spend my whole life playing for Eagle Hawk. But, um, you know, like the opportunity came along and I can remember once I, I read in, I saw in the paper a photo of Fred, Fred Flanagan. And Fred at that time, and they, in fact, the headlines, the big blonde, job, big blonde giant from Geelong. And I, was, I looked at it in awe and I thought, gosh, they must be big fellas down there. And, um, and I was, you know, I couldn't believe that I was asked to come down here and try and play with them. When I get here, Fred's not as big as I thought he was. And, and then I thought, these fellas, none of these fellas are faster than I am or anything like that. You know how it goes through your mind.
And uh, it turned out that, uh, to me, at, at that time, they were all titans, in other words. But when you get down here, the people just like yourself and all enjoying the game of football. And um, um, the, so that Im first impressions, I think, are always the, the biggest, and that's how it happened. Yeah. But uh, I guess we could go on for hours, and we all love talking footy. Time is going to beat us, but uh, yeah. it's been an absolute thrill to catch up with you this morning yeah. and uh, enjoy yeah. uh, what you uh, had the enjoyment of uh, playing at the Zillow Footy Club. Thanks, uh, Eric. Yes. It's been Peter Pianto in Catching Up with the Cats. Alongside him in the forward pocket, Peter Pianto, a rover of skill and class. Well, we've had a special luncheon today down at... Uh, the Oval. We've had the members of the 51 and 52 Premiership sides and uh, three fellas from Essendon who we played in 51 and actually I've got with me Peter Piano and Peter you met the fella that you played on, didn't he? Leslie Gardner. Yes, Les, uh, I used to change in the back line, in the forward line. Yeah. Les was there, yes. Yeah. Well, what recollections have you got of playing in the Premiership times? Oh... That's going back a long way, Wolfie. You it know is. how long it is, don't yes, you? Yes, it is a long time. Over 50 years. Yeah. But um, I, I, I think that uh, you're talking about the grand final or... Yeah, well, any... No, well, I think the whole year um, was, with, particularly with Essendon, they were the team to beat. That was yeah. obvious, but... Um, and I had great duels with Nipper and Neil and I. Just yes. like, we had great duels with um, Bill Hutchison yeah. and um, Tate. There was Greg Tate and... Yeah. Uh, McEwen. Yeah. And they were known as the Mosquito Fleet for Essendon. Mm. And uh, a, a lot of people today say that the combination of Neil and I was, um, you know, something to. Uh, it was, it was, of, Peter. But yeah. I think that the best combination I saw was the Essendon trip, the Mosquito yeah. Fleet. And Billy Hutchison Court was the top of the tree. Well, the top of the, of the, the tree. Yes, yeah. He was a great fellow and he was a great player. So we had lots of duels with them and they were good. And. Uh, <laughs> You follow the club ever since you've been here. You've never sort of lost your allegiance or anything for them, Peter. You've been coach and yeah. you still follow them exactly the same. How could you not? That's right. That's like, right. Uh, I, I can't believe that uh, the exchange of players today to other clubs. Yeah. Like, I don't think... I'm looking back now and I honestly say I wouldn't have thought that any money that I'd have ever been offered to go and leave Geelong to play somewhere else, I couldn't have done it. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. because we were lucky. Let's put it that way. We, we were played lucky, in a very good team, and we were successful for yeah. so many years. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, there's something happens to you during that time that you develop this loyalty. Yeah. And I think personally, that's the thing I find hard to cope with today: the lack of loyalty in players mm. to their. Well, of course, it's, it all boils down to yeah. how much you can get for what. That's right. Well, it's lovely to have you here, Peter. Mm. We'll go in and enjoy our luncheon. I'm sure we will. Good on you, Peter. It's a pleasure to uh, interview someone who, arguably, along with Neil Tresize, formed one of the greatest roving duos ever to play at the Geelong Football Club. I refer to and welcome Peter Pianto. Thank you, uh, Eric. Um, when you say that, well, I thought that in my time, before I came, there were, you might remember Essendon had three uh, really good rovers, uh, Hutchison, Tate and McEwen, and I really think that they'd be pretty hard to beat. So thank you for your mention, but I still think they were probably too good for us. Well, I'm probably echoing the sentiment, certainly of Geelong supporters, and we're not biased at all. Pete, uh, 1951. He, he could all went down to Geelong, uh, Peter Pianza and yep. Ducky Palmer and Bruce Peake. In 1951, Geelong would end the season on top of the ladder and under first-year skipper Fred Flanagan would meet the reigning premiers Essendon on grand final day. This was a Geelong side that included rookies of the calibre of McMaster and Pianto, superstar key forwards in George Gunninen and skipper Flanagan. Davis would be replaced by his premiership teammate Peter Pianto and in 1967 watched as the Cats took all before them and reached the grand final against Richmond. But under the astute handling of former champ Reg Hickey, Geelong was about to enter its greatest era. Geelong topped the ladder in 51 and had the top goal kicker and Brownlow medalist as well. Come on, the cats. We're proud of the blue and the white. We're proud of our 
Mandy's plans for back-to-back -back flags, though, were right on schedule. After an easy win against Collingwood in the second semi-final, the Cats were the hottest grand final favourites for many years. From the full back line, held the team in good state. Around the packs, Geelong also did well, with small man Peter Pianto feeding off a dominant ruck division. And Nipitra size strongly tackled here, but a multiple goal kicker on the day. Ganinen at full forward was also a handy target, kicking five goals. As in their second semi encounter, the Cats more than doubled the Magpie score to take out the 52 flag. Geelong Rover Peter Pianto. When you talk about the footy and you start to reminisce, you think of all the champions we've had. Like Hickey, Smith and Flanagan, Pianto, Davis and Precise, Gunnin and Turner and Free and John Hyde. Then later there was Polly, Wade Lord and Goggin too. The champions that made you swell with pride. Come on, the cats. Come on, the cats. Let's show them all the way our team can play. For we are Geelong. Let's show them we belong with the greatest side that ever played a game. So come on, the cats. Come on, the cats. We're proud of the blue and the white. We're proud of our name. When you talk about the footy and you start to reminisce, you think of all the champions we've had. Like Hickey, Smith and Flanagan, Pianto, Davis and Precise, Gunnin and Turner and Free and John Hyde. Then later there was Polly, Wade Lord and Goggin too. The champions that made you swell with pride. Come on, the cats. Come on, the cats. Let's show them all the way our team can play. For we are Geelong. Let's show them we belong with the greatest side that ever played a game. So come on, the cats. Come on, the cats. We're proud. Let's show them we belong with the greatest heart.